G'day everybody, my name is Pat. I hope you're having a lovely day. I'm here with a new track menu tutorial on speed drifting. Uh, what is speed drifting? It is a small angled drift done at higher speeds, which increases your acceleration more than driving in a straight line. Now, what surfaces can speed drifting be done on? Be done on road, grass, dirt, and ice, as far as I'm aware. Now, I will have to figure out more about the ice speed drifting before I say anything about it, but I definitely know it's possible. Now, how do you do a speed drift? Well, first of all, get into a drift. You want to see four tire skids. And once you have these four tire skids, you want to overlap them roughly 50%, as you can see right here, and just maintain this as long as you possibly can. Now, what are some common ways of getting into speed drifts? Well, we have jumps, we have hills and bumps, Another way is S4D, a very common one actually, by tapping the brake. And then of course the oversteer, which you've probably experienced before but had not known why. And of course dirt and grass, which is the fastest surface to do a speed drift on. Now, Let's have a look at the map we've got here. Now, as you can see, I will demonstrate for you on the keyboard and controller. I will start with the keyboard. And I'll just drive the map normally. This is a speed drift training map I built. Now I'm going to do this without sliding. No drifting. I want you to have a look at my speed at the end. I will drive both sides. So that was 680 at the finish. Okay. Now let's drive to the other side, to the right, just so you know for sure that they're the same, they're symmetrical. Again, not intentionally drifting, oop, I accidentally did it there, but still, 681, and that was only with a tiny speed drift, and that was an accident. Now let's see what happens, I want you to pay attention to my speed at the end of this run, which I will do a speed drift for. So, you see I'm crossing over the drift skids roughly halfway. You can look on either side, it does not matter. And I ended up with 709 speed. I did go wide, that's why the time wasn't that good. But I'll do it again on the other side. So again, just trying to keep the drift skids roughly halfway overlapped. Now I had to split it there because I went too tight. But still, that was a 702 speed. Now I'll demonstrate this again on the controller. Now, it does not matter whether you tap or hold, it's whatever is personal preference. What matters more is consistency. So, holding it roughly halfway, that was actually a bit of an oversteer, but that's okay. Still 703, and that's a, And I don't think it's even possible to get a sub 13 without speed drifting in this map, which is nice. Again, you can look at either the inside or the outside skids, you just want to have them roughly halfway crossed over. And that's 703 speed, again, compared to 680 with no drifting. Alright, now I will go to summer map 11, so you can have a look at the dirt and grass SDs. I think that's the best way to do it. And now I'm just going to drive normally, and I want you to pay attention to the speed on the dirt. Right here. I'm just going to drive straight, straight off of it respawn so you can see it again I'm not steering at all and that's 684 now what happens if I do drifts like this just little drifts instantly increase to 710 now I missed a couple of drifts there but again you can see the speed difference in that short of a space is insane I will demonstrate this again on the controller You don't really need much, just tiny taps is all you need, as you can see on the input display. And that allows you, again, to have a big speed increase. One other thing I forgot to mention about the dirt just then, you can actually use the sound cue to tell if you're drifting or not. The dirt is slightly louder than um, normal if you're drifting compared to not drifting, so that's another way you can tell. Again, you just want to hold that tiny angle. On grass, it, you don't have any sound cue, you only have your visual cue, which if you look at where the skids are, all you have to do is just make them slightly wider. And as you can see, my acceleration increases tremendously when I do that. You can do this by either you can do this by either holding a stick or just doing small taps on the keyboard, as I'll demonstrate here.
Wow, that is so fast. <laughs> That's crazy. All right, well, as a short summary for speed drifting, on the road, you need a minimum speed of 390, but for, if you're a beginner, do not worry until at least 450 speed. Uh, you want to end up in a full drift with, and you want to see four tire skids. And with those four tire skids, you want to overlap them roughly 50%. And the, your consistency of your speed drift is more important than the precision. Never forget that. Now when it comes to drifting on the dirt and the grass, just very small angle and just tiny taps and you'll gain a tremendous amount of speed. One other thing I should mention before I wrap up this video is that when you play full speed or when you want to speed drift, make sure you have your shaders quality set to high or very high. The reason for this, these green borders do not appear. This also applies to the dirt and ice blocks. So it just gives you more visibility and also it makes your speed drift skids darker. So again, if you're playing full speed, make sure your shader quality is set to high. Well, that's the end of my explanation on speed drifting. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If I missed anything or you didn't understand, let me know in the comments. I will end the video with the rendered replay with inputs displayed so you can have a look, plus a bonus clip of every speed drift in summer 22 the campaign map all right hope you enjoyed the video as always have a great motherfucking day